Hello everyone and welcome to Clay Formations where I show you how I sculpt in polymer clay. Or at least try. And right now I'm trying to find my friend Poser. Usually he hangs around here in the studio but I haven't seen him at all. Is he in here? No. Hmm. Well there's the signs that he uses. Have any of you guys seen Poser anywhere? No? Maybe he's hanging around here. Hmm. Oh, there you are. What are you doing? I'm dusting off your brain. What do you want? I need your help. Can you come to the studio? Alright, cool. Let's go. So this is it. Wow, that's a cool looking character. Are you sure you're up to it? I think so. Okay, get ready for pose number one. How's this? Mm, no, not regal enough. How about this one? No, his feet have to be on the ground. Or this. What about this one? No. Boy, you sure are picky. Come on, let's try another one. Okay, how about this one right here? Closer. How about this one? It looks kind of regal. Yeah, that's it. That's perfect. Thank you, Poser. Always glad to help. You're welcome. Okay, now that we've got that straightened out, I'd like to tell you about a new character that I'm going to be working on this month. It's called Tenebris the Imp King. Tenebris was designed and drawn by Thomas Brooks at Orange Gate Studios. If you can, go by and check out his Instagram page. He's got some wonderful, amazing art there that he does. I was really impressed. Not only does he draw incredibly well, he's also a great sculptor. So after we talked for a while, he asked if I would be willing to sculpt one of his characters. So he sent me one of his pictures and I agreed. It's always a humbling experience when somebody asks you to create one of their characters in three dimensions because you want to make sure you do it right. And the trust that uh, another artist gives you to uh, create one of their characters is really, really humbling. And it just makes you want to work that much harder to make sure that it's done exactly the way that uh, the artist would want it to be. So there's the pose that Poser helped us with right there. Put two wire spacers in the holes and that will keep the flex and fill from going into them so I can put the armature back onto the base. I found that using aluminum foil to twist around the wire is much more efficient when it comes to attaching the clay. It has a better bite to it, especially when you cover it with uh, liquid Sculpey first. Now I make the hole for the tail by impaling him in the gut. Ow! Then we attach the tail through the body, bend it the other way, and then it will be secured through the whole structure of the armature. And there we go. Now I'm attaching some epoxy sculpt to the outside of the armature next to the tail. And later on I regretted that I didn't cover the whole thing with epoxy sculpt because I ran into some trouble with uh, the sculpture not being strong enough to uh, withstand all my poking and prodding and smoothing out. Unfortunately, the clay that I'm putting on right here, I'm going to have to remove later on to reinforce the sculpture with some more epoxy sculpt. It just wasn't strong enough. You can see how much it wobbles when I touch it there. Now the rest of this just involves me putting all the clay over the armature and smoothing it out and then uh, starting to do all the anatomy details. Tenebris here uh, ends up with a pretty awesome looking six pack. Wish I could make my abs look that way.
And now to make the hands. Basically you put the small wire into a brass tube, secure it with UV resin and epoxy sculpt, cover it with a little bit of aluminum foil, and then you can cover it with clay. I will make some fingernails out of Fimo clay and attach them to the hand. All in all, the hand that I did right here was about six hours worth of work. And now let's start to work on the head. This is the part that I was worried about the most because his face is so expressive and it took me several tries to, to get it right. <laughs> of course, I condensed it down so you guys don't have to watch the agony. Those steel ball bearing eyes are just there temporarily. I'm gonna be replacing them with these eyes right here. starting to take shape here. You just keep working on it until you get it right. Now we'll start working on the ears. I used Sculpey Fimo because after you bake it, it's a little more flexible and uh, less chance of breakage. I used uh, Fimo for the horns as well. the ears and here I'm reinforcing the neck because it will be needed when I put on the hair now for an incredibly challenging part of this sculpt is the hair you begin by bulking out in large pieces of clay the form and the flow of how you want the hair to go then it's just a matter of using your tools to cut through the clay and make the flowing parts of the hair it takes a lot of time and a lot of work to get it right because you start out fast and then you have to go slower and slower and slower until you get the hair the way you want it to be. And there we go. The hair on his body here is basically the same way it is on his head, and it took me eight hours to complete it. Sculpting the hand holding the staff uh, created a whole new set of challenges because the staff itself had two curves on each end. One was curved on the bottom and one was curved on the top. So I simply couldn't create a staff and then run it through his hand. So I had to use a brass tube and then sculpt the hand around it and then put the bottom half of the staff underneath and the top half uh, on the top of the hand. And it seemed to work out pretty well. Remember the other hand that we made earlier? Now it's time to attach it to his arm. And now we get to work on his tail. Now for
for his legs, feet, and claws. Now we're coming to the part of the sculpture that is completely out of my control and creates the most anxiety through the whole process is time to bake. And yes, I did let it cool down before I took it out of the oven. And all hail to the gods of polymer clay because he did not crack in one spot. And that is very rare and I think, I thank heavens for that. Painting orange is so hard to do on a white surface. It took about five coats of orange to get his eyes to look right. As you can see, his first coat of paint on his face was way too dark, so I remixed the colors and it turned out okay. Now we begin to work on his staff, both halves, the bottom half and the top half. Now for a test fit. That works. Now we'll cover the staff in clay. Now we do the shading with a powder of pastels. We just paint it between all the crevices and it gives a nice blend. Time to attach the staff. The bottom half goes on first and then the top half goes on. And then in between, right where his hand is, I put epoxy sculpt because I knew that Sculpey clay was not going to be strong enough to uh, hold that part of the staff together. Now we put on all the finishing touches of the face, the eyes, the eyebrows, and all the little details. I had to make the base a little bit bigger because I was afraid that it was going to tip over if it didn't have a wider part on the bottom. Easy remedied with a little bit of clay and flexifil. After two months of hard work, we are finally coming to the completion of this project. I want to thank Thomas Brooks again from Orange Gate Studios for entrusting me with your wonderful character. I had a really fun time doing it. Not that it didn't have its challenges, but I still love doing it. And I thank you and appreciate you giving me the opportunity to do it. Thank you to everyone who watched this video. Take care and we'll see you next time.